Sethu, the CEO of Coca-Cola, in conversation with my colleague Sonali Krishna, James Quincy is speaking. Um, and I think what you're seeing in 2019 is another year of really strong underlying operating performance. Uh, we'll have good top line growth, uh, a lot of leverage in the P&L, uh, such that operating income is growing double digits. Uh, uh, in 2019 offered very strong growth uh, of operating income in 2018. Uh, so I think actually, and, and when I talk to investors, um, what they say is we love the fact that business is growing uh, strongly on an underlying operating basis. What's happening in 2019 is we're being hit by foreign exchange. The, we, whilst we report everything in US dollars, uh, we are predominantly an international operation. We're in over sure. 200 countries. And as that gets converted into US dollars, uh, there was an abrupt strengthening uh, of the U.S. dollar in, in the late summer uh, last year that affected our results in uh, the back half of last year. And then it's going to flow through uh, into this year. And I think that's where the, the disconnect came in, in the marketplace was on expectations around foreign exchange. Um, but I know investors love the continued strength uh, of the underlying operating performance. And that's what we're really focusing on because the foreign exchange will even itself out in the long run. And how is 2019 looking for you? Worse than 2018? Uh, when we gave our guidance, we, 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 um, we commented that we were a little more cautious about the macroeconomic outlook for 2019. Um, not dissimilar from a lot of the forecasts that are coming out uh, from the international institutions, the IMF uh, and other places, seeing uh, reducing forecasts for expectations for 2019. There is a bit of a uh, a weird situation in the global economy. When you look at the forecasts and you look at the headline numbers, you, you see a softening. Um, things on the ground seem to be uh, still uh, relatively robust. We, as we commented uh, in some of our calls, we started 2019 um, with, with a good start, a good foot forward. So I think it's just mainly, it's actually, we don't know how 2019 will, will, will end up. Um, we can only start from the forecasts that are out there. Uh, we've adopted a little more of a cautious stance versus 2018. Mm. Um, but our focus is on executing our plan in the marketplace. We can control only what we can control. Uh, and we're going to go after that and we'll see how it ends up. How challenging is the carbonated beverage space right now in terms of, you know, consumption, in terms of its growth, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, Consumer behavior in the West, in advanced markets, uh, juxtaposed with, let, with emerging markets. Well, the, the, the sparkling beverage industry, even leaving aside some of the other categories that have uh, sparkling, uh, sparkling parts of them, uh, continues to grow. I mean, it grew, it grew volumetrically. It grew in retail dollars last year. And, and the growth of retail dollars uh, has been a sustained trend. So I think there's, there's, there's sometimes a bit of a difference between the narrative uh, and what's actually happening with the consumers because okay. you're actually seeing them engage with the sparkling category, particularly as we and others have invested uh, in reformulating uh, the products to reduce the sugar or innovating in zero yeah. sugar products yeah. and smaller packages. So actually you see, you see growth coming back into the category because it's resonating uh, more with consumers. They're getting, they're getting the things they want from the category and so they're coming back in um, in, in volume terms and, and in, uh, uh, in dollar terms. In fact, last year, Coca-Cola Zero Sugar had its, not just its best year, but its fastest year of growth uh, last year. So you're seeing some vitality come back in, and, and particularly for uh, American observers of our industry, the fact that Diet Coke um, started to stabilize and do well, and we brought innovation to it, I think made people reconsider uh, maybe this is a category uh, that's regaining some momentum as it adjusts to new consumer tastes. So are you saying that the narrative around the whole carbonated beverage space is much more exaggerated and is not really in that much of a danger than it actually is? Is made out to be. I, I, think, I think some people took it to the extreme. Of course, you get a range of opinions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think they, they, uh, people focus too much on a couple of markets rather than the global trends. But I think what you're seeing now is as we've, as we've invested in making it more relevant for consumers today, whether they're in the developed countries uh, or with affordability in some of the emerging markets, you're starting to see some more vitality come back into the industry. Uh you know, but according to Euromonitor, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're the expert on this, uh, is, is that, you know, that you, the carbonated beverage sales expanded by about 1%, will expand by about 1% between 2018 and 2023. 
and the pace of pickup is uh, is is there and it's really expected from uh, mostly asia and eastern europe as you know the advanced markets such as you know uh, you know western europe and america are all pretty flat. Would, would you say that's an accurate reading? Well, it's a forecast. Um, they're entitled to their forecast. We'll see what the results end up being. I think what we can say is over the last few years, uh, the sparkling industry has been growing revenue about 3%. Um, so that would represent a deceleration from what is current trends. Mm -hmm. um, and I think certainly what we see in our business, and then obviously as we look back and see what the industry is doing, uh, we don't see that deceleration. Actually, as we invest to make it relevant for consumers, we see ourselves sustaining the 3% uh, in round numbers globally in terms of revenue growth. Now, that's... All right.